I'm going to read a scripture now that's very near and dear to our next speaker. And I've talked to Bubba a few times, and I've listened to his uh, background once, and he always comes up with this scripture. This is Philippians uh, 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, we pretty much all know what's just happened to Bubba. Bubba went back to the hospital again. It's not his first time around with cancer. And Bubba, when I talked to him, when I asked him to come here today, I said, how did you handle it? And he said, there's only one way I've ever handled it. I look at Christ. And in this scripture, when you, when you break it down, the word strength there is a strength that's a God-given strength. And that's what it is. And he gives us that strength to persevere until whatever's going to come, comes. And that's what he wants to do for all of us all the time. He didn't promise us rose gardens here. Our rose gardens and all our glory are in heaven. And we are just passing through here to get to there. And then he just hones us as he goes. He puts us like the potter of the clay, puts us back on the wheel, and he refines us, and he smooths us out again. And this scripture has gotten Bubba through a lot of his turmoil in his life. And I did ask Sue once, what's it like to be married to Bubba? <laughs> and she just rolled her eyes and said, if you only knew. <laughs> Brother, I can't give you living water. You already have that. But I can give you a bottle of water to quench your human thirst right now. Come on up and, and lay it on everybody, please. You got it. Wow. That's all I can say. Uh, let's take a moment here and pray to get me through this situation, please. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, I come before you with thanksgiving and praise to your holy name. Father God, I know that you are the one that's got me through all these turmoils in my life. Father God, I want to give you glory and praise and no one else. Father God, so speak through me so that they may hear that the only way is through you, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Well, I uh, kind of want to take you back a little bit. When I started uh, some of the main struggles in my life, uh, my whole life has been kind of turmoil. My uh, parents were uh, both uh, very heavy drinkers, alcoholics, and that's all I really knew all my life. And... So I didn't have much of a background to uh, lead me to Christ or how Christ would give me strength. I came to Christ as a teenager, struggled back and forth with a few things and uh, just never really gave the whole thing over to him. Fast forwarding quite a bit here, so not to take up the whole day in my life. Uh, 1989, I took the youth at our church to a Carmen concert because Sue asked me if I would uh, be the chaperone, and I thought taking some youth to a concert would be fun. I can babysit. <laughs> Little did I know God had a plan to talk to me at that point, and maybe not the youth as much. At that point in 1989, I rededicated my life to Christ, and from then on I've been growing and growing and growing. And I'm a work in progress, as most of you know. Yes. Sue knows. But, uh... <laughs> The real turmoil started in 2003, when I knew I had some issues from my past drug and alcohol days that uh, haunted me, and I just had to find out some answers. Quit shaking. <laughs> so I went to the doctor and had a test and uh, said, I want all the blood work done and the whole, the whole thing. And he says, OK, no problem. Came back for the results. He says, you're fine, a little high sugar con uh, level. but." You know, quit eating six bowls of ice cream a night and you'll be okay. <laughs> so I'm down to five now. <laughs> anyway, uh, I said, how about hepatitis? And he said, we don't test for hepatitis. I said, well, that's one of my main concerns. I told him my issues in the past. They tested and found out I was positive for hepatitis C. Wasn't a great shock to me. I knew my past and I knew what causes, for the most part, hepatitis C. But then when we went in to get our... Uh, results from a CAT scan that they did on my liver to find out what condition it was in, they hit us with the slammer. 
Ron, I'm sorry to tell you, but we're not worried about your hepatitis. You have cancer. But I tell you the truth. I looked at Sue and she looked at me. And we told the doctor, okay, what do we got to do? What's our next step? And you, even the doctor kind of looked at us strange, like, how are you taking this so well? Because I have belief and trust in my God. As I was preparing to go into the uh, operating room, I had some of my brothers and sisters in Christ and family around singing and praying with me. And it, it was really a glorious time because I knew that when I went into that operation, it was a win-win situation for me. If he called me home, glory be to God, and I'll be there to praise and worship with the king. But if he didn't, then he had a job for me to do here on earth and a message to put out. At the same time, I rewind a little bit. We had taken our mother, my mother in with us. Uh, she was terminally ill, and we were to take care of her in the last days. I went into the anesthesiologist that they went to put me under, and uh, he said, how can you be singing and being so happy? And I said the same thing I, I told the doctor. It's a win-win situation. I'm a winner either way I go. He kind of looked at me, shrugged his shoulders, and I went in. I got through the operation, everything was fine. I came home, walked through the door. Here was my mom. She said, my baby's home. And he's safe. And I might be wrong in the days here because that whole time was kind of jumbled together with me, but about four days later, my mom went home to be with the Lord. Because four years prior to that, she started going to church with Sue and I, and she accepted the Lord Jesus Christ at the age of 77 years old. Cool. She accepted Christ as her Savior. Then she looked out after she gave her testimony to everybody in the, in the uh, church. She pointed her little arthritis crooked finger out there and she says, my golly, if I can do it at 77, so can you. <laughs> and not a dry eye in the house. It was uh, pretty emotional and she got the message across. My life proceeded on and I used that as my testimony that God told me at that point, I got you through this, now I want you to go and tell the lost and dying world. I had no idea what he meant. I wasn't ashamed of my faith, but I didn't really tell a lot of people. A few weeks later, we went to church and uh, opened up the bullet that said, Motorcycle Bible Study. Sue says, uh, there you go, why don't you get involved with the men of church? <laughs> get you out of the house for a while. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's cool. You know, we'd do that, probably go on an ice cream run, and it'd be all fun. <laughs> I called up, and the guy told me, are you married? And I said, yeah. Did your wife ride with you? I said, yeah. Well, bring her with. I said, oh. I mean, I, mean, I said, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> we, we went to the Bible study, and to our surprise, it was the first of the ministry deed tapes for CMA. Oh. Right then we knew how I was going to go tell the lost and dying world. And from 2003 to this point today, that's been my only goal, to tell the lost and dying world what Jesus did for me. Because you know what? You can't argue with what he did for me. Mm -hmm. You can argue what scripture says. You can argue with something, you know, you hear from somebody else. But I got news for you. My life is what God gave me. Amen. And I've been able to witness a lot of people because of that background. Last year, I noticed I had a sore in my mouth. And I battled with going in to get it tested. Not really fear that it was cancer, but just didn't want to go through the whole ordeal. When I finally went in, the doctor told me the dreaded news again. You've got cancer. At that point, they told me they may have to remove my jawbone. And it may be an extensive surgery. And hopefully it's not in your lymph nodes. Because if it got in the lymph nodes, there's nothing they can do. 
Sue right away, my prayer warrior. I said we're going to pray for healing. It's not that I don't believe that God will heal. Sometimes I just don't know if it's his will or not. And I accept that. If it's not his will, I'm ready for whatever. So we started praying. We got prayer out throughout the world. In the meantime, I happen to be talking. I don't talk with my kid brother too much. Our family's not as close as it should be. But they had some problems in their marriage. And my uh, sister-in-law called and asked if I could try to help out. She knew what I believed, and she knew that God was the only answer to help them out in the situation. So I was able to contact my brother and talk to him, work them through their issues they were having in their marriage. I said, Mike, the only thing I want to ask you is you go to church with her. She wants you to go to church. And then God hit me, so she can't stop there. So I said, Mike, I know you know of our God. I know that you believe in him. But Mike, I want to know, do you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior. Have you ever asked him to forgive you for your sins? He says, no, big brother, I've never done that. I want to do it now. He says, come on down to my house. I said, Mike, I'm not waiting. Something could happen to me on the way down there. Something could happen to you. I want you to think about it, and I want you to pray the sinner's prayer right now on the phone with me. My brother gave his heart to Jesus Christ right there on the phone. Cool. And if it wasn't for this cancer, I don't know that I would ever reconnected in a way that I was able to use that. So, you know, God takes a bad situation and turns it around. Amen. And turns it for his good and his glory. And so that was one instance that's been such a blessing to me through this. The other instance is all the people. You see a mayor is all you people that are praying for me. I don't mean to sound this arrogantly, but I expect that. But some of the one percenters and the hardcore bikers that were posted on Facebook, I want you to pray for my brother Bubba, if you know him. And then in the next sentence, even if you don't know him, I want you to pray for Bubba. Get on your knees right now and pray for Bubba. And they posted that on their Facebook and their friends posted on their Facebook pretty soon it was throughout the the hardcore community in every event I went to people come up to me and say we're praying for you Bubba and to me what a mighty way God's working through me a wretch that doesn't deserve it and through this whole time everybody says Bubba how do you get through this with your crazy smile and your crazy hair <laughs> And I tell him, because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that was, my, that was my scripture in 2003 when I had hepatitis. And it stuck with me and it's been my scripture ever since. And I tell the bikers and I tell everybody I talk to. That doesn't mean now that you can go out here and lift the car up and God's going to give you the strength to do it. What it means is God will give you the strength. When those turmoils come in your life, God will give you the strength to stand up under it. He'll never give you more than you can stand. And so that's been my, my scripture, and it's been really hard on my heart. But I have to tell you, while I was in the hospital, after I made it through a double surgery, the surgery didn't take the first time, so they kept me under anesthesia for an extra day, fixed it all up, and... Uh, When I came out of that, I was uh, relieved, glad I got through it all. But then God spoke to me that night, and he said, you know, you're through this, but tomorrow could be your day. I promise you so many days, and that's it. You don't get any more. You could have went in the middle of surgery if that was my time. You could go tomorrow if that's your time. And it put a whole new perspective on, gee, I got through this again. No, I'm never through it. Every day is a chance he could call me home. 
And every day I rely on that verse. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens. I can get through every day. And uh, kind of to tie this up, the kids knew, my, my children knew how dear this verse was to me in a tattoo that I had designed back in 2003 when I beat hepatitis. Hepatitis C is called the dragon. I wanted a dragon on my arm with a biker running a sword through his head. In the scripture, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. This past year, my kids paid for that tattoo. And on it, I tied a dog tag on its neck. Because not only, not only killed hepatitis C in 2003, but in 2011, there's a dog tag around his neck that says, I killed cancer all, as well. And I'm just here to tell you that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. All you have to do is give it up to him. Accept him into your heart as your personal savior. And he'll get you through all troubled times. I just want to thank you guys for letting me come up here and tell my little bit of my story. It's so near and dear to my heart that I hope people at this show heard it and it touched somebody in some way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bubba.